Hi, this is Mike Haber. Thanks for asking me what happens during a motion to suppress. A motion to suppress is a case-specific, custom-tailored request for a pretrial evidentiary hearing, wherein the defense seeks to have some or all of the state's evidence excluded from your case. It starts with a defense lawyer reviewing the unique facts and circumstances of your case, identifying some violation by law enforcement, and then articulating a legal basis upon which it should be, should be shit-canned by the judge. The only requirements for getting the hearing is that there must be a good faith basis upon which to move to suppress, and the defendant must have standing or the legal right to proceed. So long as the motion is facially valid, an evidentiary hearing must occur. The defense burden in a motion to suppress is to present a prima facie case. Presenting a prima facie case simply means establishing that the legal threshold for having a hearing exists. Depending upon the facts and circumstances, there may or may not be a need for the defendant to testify. But in any event, the defense carries this initial burden of proof that some misconduct, impropriety, or illegality occurred in the evidentiary trail. If the defense meets its initial burden, then a presumption in favor of suppression is created, and the burden of proof then shifts to the state to rebut that presumption. Rest assured, the state's going to fight tooth and nail in an all-out effort to keep the evidence in. They'll call witnesses to testify. They'll argue every which way that there was no illegal, inappropriate, or unconstitutional behavior by the police. And even if there was, then there are independent reasons for the evidence to be admitted. As a relevant aside, some of the reasons why a judge might permit otherwise inadmissible evidence to be admitted anyhow are that it would have been inevitably discovered, irrespective of the impropriety, or that the police were acting in good faith, being unaware of any issue with how the evidence was obtained. Regardless, in the end, the judge is either going to grant the motion and exclude the evidence, or deny the motion and leave the evidence presumptively admissible. The reason that it's only presumptively admissible is that the state still has to jump through all of the necessary predicate hoops to get the evidence in during a subsequent trial. That said, I thank you for your question and I appreciate your having asked it. Please remember that at Haber PA, it's all about reasonable doubt. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be putting out more soon.